So accelerating digital transformation in a post-COVID-19 world. That's exactly what a lot of companies are trying to do. They're trying to accelerate their digital transformation and keep up with the pace of technological and business changes, but they're being stymied by a whole slew of data problems. There are, as many of you already know, inefficiencies in trying to access, repair, and integrate data, and in making data available. There's inconsistencies with the data, which is coming from a variety of different sources, and there's often lack of data context. Um, and often, data might be accessible, but it's not in usable form. Sort of as you've said very many times, all right, you're sort of you move stuff up to the cloud, but you're really just kicking the can down down the road a little bit because you don't really get it in a usable form. So we really don't want data just for its own sake. We want data to help us make better business decisions for our organizations. Arlen, can you just sort of elaborate, put more context around this point, the kinds of data problems and why they matter? Uh, sure, Don. Well, if you look at our history, I mean, just look at at, at the OT, uh, you know, SCADA, HMI sector. We're coming off of 40 years of, you know, having a paradigm. And that paradigm was we have a register and a value. You know, no matter what the poll response protocol, we have a register and a value. So, for example, we have Modbus register 40,100 has a value of 200. We don't know if that's 200 gallons, 200 degrees. We have no idea. So what we do, we double click on that tag and we give it context. We give it engineering units. We may scale it. We may give it engineering high, engineering low. But we, but now with digital transformation, now we have to do that. If another consumer gets that Modbus register, we do it again and again and again. So what we're talking about here in, in in this digital transformation is our jobs is to provide tools to make data humanly understandable to all the other enterprise applications that need to consume it. And that's going to be really the focus of this of this session. Thanks, Arlen. I, I really think that puts a better, you know, better framing around what the what the scope of the problem is and really what the challenges are for organizations. Fortunately, there is a solution to these problems, which more and more companies are choosing to adopt, and it's called data ops. Data ops is, in, by definition, is an automated process-oriented methodology, which is used by analytic and data teams to improve both the quality and reduce the cycle time of data analytics. So data ops addresses the data architecture needs of industrial companies as they adopt Industry 4.0, digital transformation, and smart manufacturing. It seeks to really improve communication between data stakeholders and to really align the way that a company manages their data with the goals that they have, you know, for that data. This general process is usually called data ops, but it's sometimes called data harmonization or data cleansing. Data ops has some similarities to DevOps. Both of them combine people, processes, and tools to deliver applications or data more efficiently. And both encourage organizations to break down internal silos so that the end product can be delivered more quickly and with higher quality. And it's important to remember that data ops, like DevOps, is a methodology rather than a product or a solution or a specific position or specific team within the organization. It can only work if it is shared and adopted widely within the organization. So, let me turn to you, Arlen, and you, Travis, before we move on to talking about implementing data ops. Do you have additional, you know, any thoughts you may have about the definition or purpose of this methodology? Maybe I'll start with you, uh, Travis, and then uh, over to you, Arlen. Yeah, so, you know, we could argue that we've been doing data ops for, for quite some time. A lot of customers have been doing that. And generally speaking, they're doing that in, you know, within a silo environment, within a SCADA solution in particular. And so it works really well, right? To, to basically take that register as Arlen was saying and add the context to it and be able to put it on screen and, and work with it. But today the world of digital transformation and the world of wanting to do more uh, with that data, get that data to business, it's uh, that, that methodology, you know, stops and starts at SCADA and we need to be able to expand it. And the idea of data ops is to uh, you know, again, I'll, I'll emphasize the 
the widely adopting the the idea of this and being able to to you know, get that data and bring it into an infrastructure and and leverage it a lot more. But in order to do that, we have to leverage you know modern technology and standards in order to get there, uh, which we'll be going into a lot more detail here. Great, thanks, Travis. Your thoughts, Arlen? Well, uh, again, the same thing. It's the forest for the trees, Don. Is that we've had this capability. It, it, within ignition we've had this capability from like travis said the very beginning but now we're thinking about it differently uh one good example i, I always think of is you know where we look at data from efm devices electronic flow measurement and um, you know we'll bring those tags in and from an operational standpoint we're quite happy with all of these crazy enumerations that we have in our operational systems right oh a zero means this a five means this but we know that we we have that tribal knowledge within our ot group but now our job is to get that out and, and get it out to other consumers of our information so with uh, ignition with things like UDT. Now we can take those enumerations and create string tags within our UDTs that further defines that so that down the line, instead of a zero, you may get a value that says orifice material is stainless steel, or you may get any of those enumerations that we deal with today operationally. We need to think about making those easier for everybody else in the enterprise to understand. And I think to a large part, that is the definition of data ops. Yeah, and I'll, I'll add one more thing to that, Arlen, which you know, which you, you, you say a lot of the time, you said it here, we'll emphasize it yet again, is that we want to be able to do all of that work once and leverage that work everywhere else, right? We define that information, we need to be able to discover that uh, and those objects everywhere else. And that, that's a really important thing. It can't be siloed. It has to be brought to the, to, to the entire infrastructure. That's a great point, Travis. And I think, I think it really emphasizes as we bring OT and IT organizations together, you really basically have to have a nomenclature and naming and, and, and conventions and modeling and asset locations where basically everybody can understand and be on the same page if at the end of the day, we're going to get better decision making. 